Welcome everybody! In today's video, I'll be building a Raspberry Pi tablet. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my video here, where I show off the capabilities of this tablet. Before we get right into the project, I'd like to give a massive shout out to Banggood for supplying me with almost all of the parts for this project. Be sure to check the description for the links to all the parts I used in this video and links to their website. Without further ado, let's get right into it. First, I tested everything out just to make sure it all worked correctly. Next, I removed most of the ports and GPIO pins from the Raspberry Pi 3 and the battery expansion board. This way, I can make my tablet as thin as possible. Next, I cut off the screen's Raspberry Pi and screen driver board screw mounts. I placed all the parts onto the screen so that I would know how everything was going to fit together. After some testing, I noticed that my Raspberry Pi's USB port that I added on for testing purposes wasn't working. After some research, I discovered that the current limiter for the Pi's USB port wasn't functioning properly. To fix that problem, I placed a resistor between these points on the Pi, and that seemed to work just fine. After cutting the unnecessary portions off of my battery board, I took the measurements of the screen so I could start designing my 3D printed housing. Since the print was going to take over 12 hours to finish, I let my printer run overnight. Sadly, the first print failed, so I had to restart the entire thing. When it finally finished, I was super excited to find out that I accidentally designed the housing incorrectly. I made it a little bit too large, so I redesigned it and printed it out one last time. Thankfully, everything went well and the print was a success. Next, I installed the two USB ports, the charging port, the headphone jack, and the power button into the housing. Then I wired up the battery and super glued it in place. I also wired the battery board to the screen driver board and charging port and later the Raspberry Pi. Next I wired the headphone jack back to the Raspberry Pi. I also wired up the power button and hot glued it in place. This is what the entire unit looks like so far. Next I got to wire up the USB ports. Then I performed a quick and painful test. The reason that this was so painful is because it informed me of the fact that I damaged my screen. Yay. I informed Banggood, the company who supplied the parts for this project, about this, and they were super nice about it and gave me another screen for free. Huge thanks to them for that. When my new screen arrived, I had to cut the screw mounts off again. After covering the back of the screen in electrical tape, I performed another test. Next, I glued my Raspberry Pi in place. Before I glued the screen in place, I messed around with it a bit. One of the first problems I noticed was that I forgot to add a way to access the SD card. I also noticed that the whole system was only able to stay on for a few hours before the battery died. Even though that's a good amount of time and it totally could be used this way, I was still hoping it would be longer. So I removed the screen and started fixing these things. Sadly, if I wanted to fit another battery into the tablet, I would have to remove the battery board. Luckily, I already had a power boost converter that I bought about a year ago. So I removed the other board and replaced it with another battery. One thing about this that was very frustrating was that I wouldn't be able to use the same power button I was using before. Because with the other battery board, I could use a switch that when you press in the button, the circuit completes and that turns on the board. And when I push the button again, the circuit is not completed anymore and the board would turn off. But with the power boost, when the circuit is completed, the board turns off, and when the circuit isn't completed, the board turns on. So that would mean that when the button is pressed in, my tablet is off, and when the button is out, my tablet is on. So to fix this, I had to get another switch. I decided to go with a rocker switch since that's what I had lying around. I cut the hole for the power button into a larger rectangle and put the switch into it. Next, I wired it to the power boost converter. Next, I cut a small hole directly under the SD card slot and glued pieces from the old battery board over it so that the SD card wouldn't fall into the tablet when I tried to remove it. Later, I replaced the circuit board pieces with a black 3D printed plate. After a quick test, I was finally able to glue the screen in place. I decided to use hot glue because then I would always be able to remove the screen if something inside broke. 
Finally, I installed RT Android onto an SD card and plugged it into my tablet. Here's a little clip of me playing Angry Birds. And if you would like to see more, make sure to check out my overview video where I show all of my favorite things that you can do with this tablet. Well, that concludes this build video. Thanks again to Banggood for helping out with this project. Make sure to check out their store, links below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and sharing it with your friends. As always, comment if you have any questions and I will try my hardest to respond. Thanks for watching. Adios.